Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Brown Gaming, and before we get into this list, let me lay down the rules for this ranking system. Bosses in the Octo Cannon are ranked based upon the first time that you face them, when the storyline forces you to use a specific weapon. For example, I'll be ranking how hard the Octo Samurai's battle is when fighting with the ruler rather than any other weapon. On top of this, bosses who have multiple fights will show up multiple times on this list, as the rematches with each boss are different enough to where they deserve a separate ranking. With all that said, let's begin. The Octo Oven, which has to be one of the weirdest design choices for a boss, is also the easiest in this game, due to its slow speed, pathetic attacks, and repetitive moveset. In the Octo Oven's first phase, it shoots out bread. After a few of these attacks, the oven will then send out all of its bread loaves, which you can then use to climb to the top of the oven and pop its weak point. And from there, the fight really doesn't change itself that much. Sure, it may gain some armor in the third phase and shoot out ink sticks and have a jam machine, but the difficulty doesn't really rise at all. I'll admit, for a kitchen appliance, it puts up a decent fight, but it's still ridiculously easy and definitely deserves the lowest spot on this list. The Octo Shower is also incredibly easy when fighting with the Splat Charger, which is the weapon you are forced to use when facing this boss for the first time. You can damage this boss by shooting the Octocopters carrying it and then popping the weak point that gets revealed. Granted, the Octocopters do grow in number and speed throughout the fight, but with a steady aim you can defeat them quite swiftly. The Octo Shower itself uses four main attacks, missiles and a sniper gun in its first phase, adding a hand crank Splat gun in the second, and finally adding a stinger in the third. On top of this, the Octo Shower dashes across the Reno with angle whenever you destroy an Octocopter. While these attacks sound like trouble, they are all slow, predictable, and easy to dodge. All reasons why Octo Shower stands as one of the easiest bosses in this game. Now, the Octo Samurai is a complete joke when you use gun weapons such as the Splatling and the Splat Dooleys. However, when you're forced to use the Splat Roller against this boss, he proves to be more formidable than the previous two, but only by a small amount. The Octo Samurai is unique because his whole body is inkable, so there isn't a specific weak point that you have to hit to reveal the tentacle. Just keep on aching his body and you'll slowly defeat him. As for the Octo Samurai's attacks, while they come in a variety, such as the Octo Motorcycles or spin attacks with his roller, they are also easy to dodge and predictable. Keep your distance, sling your paint, and you should have no problems defeating this boss. DJ Octavio went from the hardest boss in Splatoon 1 to being one of the easiest in Splatoon 2, which is disappointing considering how people enjoyed the challenge from the first game. What makes this fight so easy in Splatoon 2? Well, like the bosses we've already mentioned, his attacks are very predictable and easy to avoid or counter. Even though DJ Octavio takes longer to defeat, which is why he gets ranked higher, the fight feels like it gets easier with each phase. This is especially true in the last phase, where all you need to do is just jump and fire the Rainmaker in a very slow and simple pattern. The DJ Octavio fight in Splatoon 2 is definitely more cinematic and difficult, and to be honest, that make me dead! And at number 7, we have Octostomp, which is the hardest out of the main campaign bosses, but it's complete trash when compared to the bosses of the Octo expansion. So what makes Octostomp harder than the other bosses we've covered? Well, for one, Octostomp's attacks, while predictable, are not that easy to avoid. Octostomp's first phase is extremely simple, as all he does is try and face slam your inkling into the ground. If you dodge this successfully, you can climb up his body to pop a tentacle and move him to the next phase. Once that damage is dealt, the Octostomp will acquire an uninkable coat, so you have to now break its seal before you can climb his body. Meanwhile, the Octostomp fires a splatling gun at your inkling, which is pretty accurate and somewhat difficult to dodge. After breaking its coat and dealing enough damage again, Octostomp will then enter his third phase, where he grows two more faces on his coat and will continuously rush at you and try and face stomp the inkling into the ground. This is where his attacks become very rapid and hard to dodge, and I found my armor breaking quite often during this phase. As long as you are competent with the dodge rolls though, Octostomp isn't really that difficult. With that, all the main campaign bosses are out of the way, so let's move on to the ones from the Octo expansion. The 
Fight against Agent 3 is a unique one because of the size of this boss. Most bosses are much, much bigger than you, but Agent 3 is actually the same size as your character, which actually makes this fight a lot harder. Agent 3 has 4 phases in this fight, but up until his final phase, they aren't that hard to deal with, as long as you know what to expect. At the start of the battle, Agent 3 acquires the Curling Bomb Special and literally the battlefield with these explosives. However, if you shoot him while he's doing this, he won't shoot back, so this is an opportune time to deal damage. In the second phase, Agent 3 will equip the Baller Special, making you have to avoid him or waste ink by breaking the Baller before you are able to deal damage to him. Agent 3 will then move on to his third phase, where he stands on top of the UFO, constantly equips the Stingray, and fires it at you, making it hard to regenerate health while you're dodging the ray. To damage him while he's up there, you have to throw two splat bombs in a row, which may take some time to get enough ink to do so. Once you're able to pull it off and deal that damage to Agent 3, it may seem like you've beaten this boss, but he's not done yet. Agent 3 will now enter his fourth and final phase, where he constantly super jumps to the your position and uses a splashdown special on impact, one of the most annoying tactics in competitive Splatoon. So in short, Agent 3 is just a Splatoon 2 hacker and puts up a solid fight, definitely more so than the previous bosses already listed. Alright, now we're getting into completely chaotic bosses from the Octo Expansion. Bosses much, much harder than the ones from the main campaign. Enter Octo Stomp Redux, a greatly improved version of Octo Stomp that will definitely catch you off guard with its new and deadly moveset. For starters, he now begins his fight with his unankable coat, and will spawn ink bubbles onto the field from his sides whenever he face plants into the ground which makes climbing up his body actually more of a challenge. In Octo Stomp's Redux second phase, he has three seals on his coat instead of one, and he will spit out ink bubbles before he tries to shoot at you with his splatling gun. To add on to this, more ink bubbles will also spawn when Octo Stomp face plants into the ground. However, it's truly his third phase that's the killer. Not only does he have three seals on each of his faces, which are really hard to break off, but he will face stomp you twice in a row if you're close enough when his ink coat is off, immediately popping all of the bubbles around him. Octo Stomp Redux is truly a much harder than the previous matchup against the original Octo Stomp from the main campaign. Next up on our list, we have the fight with Octo Shower Supreme, the revamp of the Octo Shower from the original campaign. His attacks have been improved and made much deadlier in this rematch. The missiles are much bigger and have improved homing abilities. The Stingray's accuracy and damage has been improved. The Gatling Gun is much more accurate, and the Ink Shower's speed has increased at an alarming rate. The Octocopters that carry the Octo Shower also now fire at you, and at a pretty fast rate as well. Oh, and did I mention that you're forced to fight with the Ink Jet the entire time? Which makes regenerating health pretty dang hard. You definitely don't want to let your guard or dodging skills down while fighting this boss. Alright, so y'all remember how I said that the Octo Oven was the easiest boss in the game, yeah? Well, get this, his rematch, Octo Oven Extra Extra Large, is so greatly improved in difficulty that it takes the title of the third hardest boss in this game. In the Octo Oven's Extra Extra Large's first phase, he spawns four Octo Troopers on top of the oven, where the tentacle rests, who will completely wreck you if you pay no attention to them. Next, in the Octo Oven the Extra Extra Large's second phase, not only do Octo Bombers and more Octarians spawn on the Octo Oven, but sprinklers spawn on his sides as well, which can actually kill you if you aren't careful and take them out immediately. The Octo Bomber is a major pain in the neck as well, once you climb the oven, as he can kill you even after you've popped the tentacle in the second phase. Then, if you thought it couldn't get any worse, Octo Snipers and Splash will spawn in the third phase, which makes this fight completely intense and chaotic. You'll get so focused on the Octo Snipers that you'll forget that the bread can still pop out of the oven and damage you, immediately causing your armor to break. This boss fight is truly a monstrosity when compared to the original campaign bosses, especially when compared to its original fight. The Revenge of the Octo Samurai is much, much harder than this previous fight, but only because you're forced to face this boss and a baller the whole time. The Samurai himself doesn't get too many upgrades, but the ones he gets make this fight very, very hard. Not only is the Octo Samurai's ruler now monstrously large, but he's on heavy steroids this time, with a health that feels 10 times more than his original health bar. It takes around 9 full baller explosions to pummel this boss to the next phase, which translates to around 1,600 health or 16 times as beast vs an inkling. 
Curiously, this boss doesn't try and splat you directly. Instead, his main goal is to knock you out of the battle ring like a professional wrestler. Sound easy to deal with? Well, it's not, seeing as how all of his attacks send you flying 20 miles in the direction that you're hit. No, it's not easy in the slightest. Time after time I'd be on the verge of getting this boss to the next phase, and then one wrong move would send me straight out of the arena. Sure, there are grades that are supposed to save you if you use them, but they rarely help as the force of the boss is enough to push the baller over or to the side of the grades. The Revenge Octave Samurai ranks number 2 because it's so easy to slip up while fighting this boss, and every time you do, you die. However, the Revenge of Octave Samurai is nothing compared to the hardest boss in this game. Without question, the hardest boss fight in all of Splatoon 2 is the fight against your inner Agent 3 from the Octo Expansion. You can only face this boss after you've beaten all 80 Octo Expansion challenges and defeat the final event. When you return to the train, a hit message tells you to go to the Deep Sea Metro Station and find a place where a door is open. Once there, you face your inner Agent 3, aka your inner hero. And believe me, <laughs> this fight is likely the hardest boss fight that Nintendo has made for a mainline Switch game. I mean that with all seriousness. To start things off, throughout the entire fight, Agent 3 will just throw out autobombs whenever he gets the chance, as there's no need for him to refill his ink tank. These autobombs have been the death of me in this fight so many times, as they'll just kill you when your armor is broken at just the edge of their blast radius. Now, what other attacks does the Agent 3 have? Well, in his first phase, he pulls out the inkjet and starts firing blasts at you, constantly keeping his aim directly locked under Octolink. If you're lucky enough to damage Ender Agent 3 enough without him regenning health, he'll enter his second phase, where after jumping back to his EFO, he'll jump down and use the splashdown on impact. In fact, he does that between every phase. Anyways, after he lands, Agent 3 will pull out the bubble blower special and use the bubbles to his advantage, immediately causing your armor to break if you get caught in the blast. Then, if you can damage him enough again, Agent 3 will enter his third phase, where he pulls out the most aggravating and deadly special of all time, the Autobomb Launcher. That's right, the special is so deadly, it was only on one single little weapon in the whole game, and Inner Agent 3 takes use of it like it's nothing. Then, in the fourth phase, he stands on top of his UFO and throws down antenna missiles, autobombs, and constantly fires at you, where you have to yet again throw two splat bombs on this platform to damage him. And then, if he thought it couldn't get any worse, Agent 3 enters his final and most deadly phase, where he just uses a splashdown whenever he wants, and will constantly super jump to your exact position and use a splashdown on impact. And did I mention that this boss has the best AI in the game? Legit, I tried standing still and doing nothing, and he killed me in around 3 seconds. He is constantly facing and firing at the player, and even cornering him won't work, as he will just fire directly at you and dodge roll out of the way. Oh yeah, and did I mention that he has dodge rolls? <laughs> I died around 30, if not 50 times, before I was finally able to defeat my inner Agent 3. And after all that work, after all that stress, after every single time he killed you, what do you get as your reward? A new weapon? More challenges? Nah, screw all that, mate! You get a golden hairpiece! Anyways, y'all, thank you for watching my list of the Splatoon 2 bosses ranked from easiest to hardest. Did y'all agree with this list, or did I misplace a boss? Let me know by commenting down below, and make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and click that notification bell to be notified whenever I post another boss ranking video. With all that said, Realm Gaming, over and out.